In this video we're going to be talking about meiosis, which is cell division of reproductive cells. We already talked about mitosis and we talked about cells that start with 46 chromosomes, that's a human cell, somatic, with 46 chromosomes that eventually divides and becomes two cells each with 46 chromosomes. The number of chromosome sets that a cell has is called ploidy. Human, human cells have 23 sets of chromosomes, two of each. So we really have 23 pairs. So our haploidy is 23. A cell that has 23 pairs is called diploid, and the cell that only has 23 is called haploid. So the difference between mitosis and meiosis is that in meiosis we actually took a somatic cell with, that was diploid and we divided it into two identical diploid daughter cells. We're not going to do that with meiosis. In meiosis, we're going to take cells called germ cells from the reproductive organs, the ovaries and the testes, and these germ cells are diploid. They have 46 chromosomes, and we're going to divide them into two gametes. Gametes are sperm cells or egg cells, and these gametes are what we call haploid. They each only have 23 chromosomes. They don't have a set of each chromosome. They only have one of each chromosome. And that's because these gametes are eventually going to be used to produce a new organism. And that new organism will have 23 pairs, but those pairs will come one set from the mother and one set from the father. So the sperm cell has 23 chromosomes. The egg cell has 23 chromosomes. When they combine, they produce a cell that has 46. So the, the question is, in this unit, how do we get our germ cells which have 46 chromosomes, to become gametes, which have 23. And you can see in this picture here that this is the human map of chromosomes. There's 23 sets. You can see 22 plus the X and Y, which are for uh, sex. Those are the sex chromosomes that determine gender. We've got two chromosomes in each set. So this is 46 total. The two chromosomes that make up set number one is called a homologous pair. That means that these two chromosomes, one from mom, one from dad, are each going to code for the same traits. It might be hair color, eye color, height, whether or not you produce a certain enzyme, etc. But those traits, each of your parents get a say in what is going to be expressed in you. So your father, his input is on this chromosome, and your mother's input might be on this chromosome. And when we had mitosis, we divided these cells into identical chromosomes, because we duplicated the DNA into identical copies. We set it up in chromosomes that had identical sister chromatids, and then we pulled those chromatids apart. So we had identical cells. Well, we can't do that with meiosis, because if we did, then all your brothers and sisters would look exactly the same, even if they weren't twins. So we need to find a way to mix up the genes between our mother and father, so that way your grandparents also have a say in what genes are expressed in you, because you're really getting a mix-up of, of what you, your father got from his parents and what your mother got from her parents, and then a mix-up of what both your parents combined and gave you. So let's look at how we do that. So again, here are the homologous pairs. There's one homologous pair, and there's another homologous pair. Homologous pair means two chromosomes that each code for the same traits. So what we have to do is we still have to double the DNA like we did in mitosis. So before meiosis, there is a DNA replication phase that's very similar to mitosis. And we just have the DNA doubling up on itself so that each of these chromosomes will have a sister chromatid with it. So eventually, each of these chromosomes is going to look like a double. And that's what this is here. During the beginning of meiosis, the first phase is called prophase 1. And during prophase 1, the homologous pairs, they seek each other out. It's called synapsis. And the homologous pairs will line up. And you can see that each homologous pair has doubled up its DNA and created sister chromatids, just like it did with mitosis. But the difference is, in prophase 1, which is the first phase of meiosis, the sister chromatids of homologous pairs start to cross their chromatids and swap their genes back and forth. That's called crossing over of non-sister chromatids. So that the non-sister chromatids have now swapped their genes back and forth. And that has made the chromosomes totally different now. So now this chromatid is different from this chromatid 
they're both different from this one, and that one's different from this one. So now all four chromatids are totally different. Meaning that when we split these chromatids up to produce our gametes, each gamete will be donating different traits based on what was available in the gene pool of their chromosomes in the beginning. This is why your brothers and sisters don't look exactly alike because of what's called genetic recombination. So this happens during prophase one. Now meiosis is very similar to mitosis in that it goes through the same phases prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, except that it goes through those cycles twice. Instead of just going through prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase and being done, it goes through prophase through telophase and then each result from that goes through prophase through telophase again. So ultimately we're going to end up with four daughter cells from meiosis. So here are the phases. We start off by forming what's called our tetrads, and our tetrads is what we had here when we had four chromatids lined up. During prophase one, which is the prophase of the first round of division, the sister chromatids swap genes, they cross over and they form genetic recombination. Then the chromosomes, the homologous pairs, line up down the metaphase plate during metaphase one of meiosis. Now instead of lining up single file in a row of 46 like they did in mitosis and split the chromatids and end up with 46 on one and 46 on the other, instead they line up two by two. The homologous pair on one side, homologous pair on the other side, each member of the homologous pairs. And when they divide in anaphase, the whole chromosome goes to the opposite side. So instead of one row of 46, we have two rows of 23. So when we split those up, we have 23 on one side and 23 on the other side. So the result after telophase one, which is very much like telophase of mitosis, where the cleavage furrow forms and the, the chromosomes have already made it to opposite poles, the two cells that you end up with each have 23 chromosomes instead of 46. So the, the result from the first Div phase of division, meiosis 1, is two different haploid cells. Now each of those two cells is now going to go through a second phase of division, and the second phase of division is just like mitosis. There's no more crossing over, the chromosomes line up single file, and they each have chromatids, so that's metaphase 2. In anaphase 2, the chromatids are broken apart, and a chromatid goes to each side, we're giving us 23 chromatids on this side, 23 chromatids on this side, each with enough DNA to survive. And then during telophase 2, they both split down the middle, and your result is 1, 2, 3, 4 haploid, genetically different gametes. They're genetically different because they swap their genes in the prophase 1. They're haploid because we lined up two by two and split 23 and 23 in the beginning and then pulled those chromatids apart in anaphase two and that's meiosis.